Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke, original air date, September 13th, 1952, and the title is Home Surgery. Do have to say, I would love to have lived in the West, but home surgery does not sound fun. I hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon. United States Marshal. They told us a man we'd been looking for, a murderer, was in a cow camp on the north fork of the Canadian River, about a hundred miles south of Dodge. So Chester and I rode down to take a look. We found a fellow there with the right name but the wrong face. So we started back. First night, we camped in a dry, buffalo-rutted depression. The next morning, I woke shortly after daybreak to find Chester already cooking breakfast. Morning, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Meat will be done soon. Uh, this is a coffee made, Chester. That's what I need. It's boiling. I didn't make much, though. I thought I'd better save our water. You know, Chester, I'll bet right now the doc's back there in St. Louis holed up in some fancy hotel and still asleep. <laughs> That's quite a thought there. Yeah. <laughs> Him right in the middle of St. Louis and us way out here on the prairie. <laughs> I'll bet he's even got sheets on his bed. I wouldn't be surprised, Mr. Dillon. Doc said this was one vacation he was going to splurge on. <laughs> he's riding the Santa Fe both ways. Huh? Well, meat's done. I... Cleaned off this rock here to cut it on. Oh, good. Oh, well, you got it warm anyway, Chester. Well, now, meat shouldn't be overcooked, Mr. Dillon. That takes a taste clean out of it. Now, then we ought to be able to taste everything about this steer. Eggman's disappointment. How's that, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Never mind, Chester. How come you woke up so early this morning? Oh, I always do. Seems as soon as it gets daylight, my feet start to sweat, and then I just got to get up. Well, that's as good a reason as any, I guess. Wow. Looks like we got company, Chester. What? Oh, where? Right out there, heading straight for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some cowboy, probably. I don't know. He doesn't ride quite like a cowboy. Why, it's just a kid, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> sure needs a haircut. <laughs> what? Say, Mr. Dillon, it's a girl. Now, what could she be doing out here? I'm carrying a rifle, too. Well, uh, get on, miss, and have some coffee. Who are you, mister? Hi, this is Chester Proudfoot, and I'm Matt Dillon. How do you do? You rustlers, or what? <laughs> uh, not exactly. I'm the U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. U.S. Marshal? Oh, that's good. It is? Why? I need help, Mr. Marshal. My daddy's awful sick. Sick? Well, where is your daddy? We got a homestead about a mile over that rise back there. Oh, what's he sick with? It's his leg, Mr. Marshal. A horse threw him and his saddle both in the corral, and then it stepped on his foot. Now his whole leg's all funny. He's got a fever, too. Mr. Dillon, that sounds like it. Yeah, I know, Chester. Uh, tell me, miss, when the horse stepped on him, did it cut his foot, uh, break the skin anywhere? Just a scratch. He tore his boot off, though. Oh. Please, Mr. Marshall, please come see him. I'm scared, the way his leg is and everything. Well, sure, sure we'll come. 
your mother with him now? I don't have a mother, Mr. Marshall. Oh. Well, then what are you doing out here if your daddy's sick? We ran out of meat about three days ago, and I don't have anything to feed him. Oh. All right. Uh, Chester, I'll write back with him. Uh, what is your name, anyway? Tara. Tara Hantry. Oh. I'll be 16 next January. Well, that's, that's fine. Uh, we'll go back to the Hantry place, Chester. You scout around for some meat. All right, sir. And if you don't find any antelope, shoot the first calf you see. Anybody's cat. I'll do it, Mr. Dillon. He's in the sleeping room, Mr. Marshall. No. Daddy, I, Daddy, I found a man, and he, he's going to help us. And, Daddy, he's a marshal, a U.S. marshal. Matt Dillon, Mr. Hendry. Uh, uh, how are you feeling? Dillon, I've heard of you. You're from Dodge, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Well, Marshal, I ain't feeling so good. My, my foot don't hurt no more, but it and my leg is all sort of, well, it ain't pretty. I don't know much about these things, but maybe I'd better take a look at it anyway, huh? Sure. Sure, Marshal. There. There she is. Uh, all right, you can cover it up. I was in the war, Marshal. I know what gangrene is. Guess you do, too, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, the first thing... Uh... A friend of mine is out getting you some meat, and then we'll load you in your wagon. Well, and we'll... Ben took the wagon. What? Ben Warling. He took the wagon when Daddy got hurt. He said he'd find a doctor and bring him back. Well, who's Ben Walling? Oh, he, he's been sort of working here, Mr. Marshall. I should have run him off long ago. That's what. Well, where is he? What did he take the wagon for? Where's he going to find a doctor around here anyway? Closest doctors in Dodge, I know of. Yeah, and he's in St. Louis, and he won't be back for a couple of weeks. I couldn't get to him anyway. Well, tell me, when did this happen? About six days ago, Mr. Marshall. Uh -huh. Ben left the day after. Well, you think he's coming back? Did he steal the wagon or what? He he comes back here and me not able to get around. I, I don't know what I'll do. I ought to take a bull with take now, him. Now, take it easy, Mr. Just a Hans. Bull with... Take it. He won't cause any trouble, so don't you get all worked up. Uh, Tara, we'll uh, let him get some rest, huh? All right, uh, we'll have some food for you soon, Mr. Hantry. I ain't very hungry. Tara, what's he so riled up about this Ben Walling for? What's between them? Oh, it's, it's nothing, Mr. Marshall. Daddy's sick and... That's all. Look, Tara, you asked me to help you, didn't you? Yes, but... You trust me, don't you? All right, Mr. Marshall... Daddy hates Ben because Ben, well, Ben likes me. Oh, I see. He even wanted to marry me. Said he would. How do you feel about Ben, Terry? You like him? No. Of course, it's time I had a man and all that, but I'm afraid of Ben, Mr. Marshall. It's like there's something wrong with him. He's always... Sneaking around when you don't expect him. Makes me uneasy, like. Well, we won't worry about Ben now. Uh, you, you stay here in case your daddy wants anything. I'll go outside and wait for Chester. Mr. Marshall. Hmm? I'm awful glad you're here. We'll see it through, Tara. Don't you worry. I won't. Now. <laughs> went outside and walked over to the small corral that stood nearby. There I rolled a smoke and looked out across the flat distances of the prairie. And I wondered how anyone could survive in all that emptiness. Hantry, lying on his bed back there in the house. He wouldn't survive. The prairie had got to him all right. And its vast loneliness had put him out of reach of any help. 
and Tara. What could she do out here in this endless land of grass? I was glad to get my mind off it when Chester rode in with an antelope across his saddle. We hung it on the corral, dressed it, took a hind quarter into Tara, and we went back outside and sat down. Yes, sir. She's a plucky girl, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, fine girl, Chester. Yeah, but this Ben fella, I just don't understand his going off with the wagon like that. Well, it doesn't matter much now. Entry won't last more than a day or two, anyway. It's that bad, is it? Yeah, blood poisoning, Chester. As soon as it reaches his heart, he's done for. Well, isn't there any way to stop it? Yeah, sure. Cut his leg off. Oh. Too bad Doc isn't here. Yeah. Would that stop it, Mr. Dillon? Uh, cutting his leg off, I mean? I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Maybe too late anyway. I... Well, I sure wish we could do something for him. I don't take to just sitting around and waiting for a man to die. Well, nobody does. It isn't right somehow, that, that poor fella and, and Tara. Why, why, Mr. Dillon, that girl will go crazy out here all alone. All right, Chester, what do you want me to do about it? I'm not a doctor. Now shut up. Well, I... Mr. Dillon, you could do it. I know you could. Do what? Be a doctor. Long enough to save Mr. Hendry's life, Are you anyway. out of your head? No, sir. Then what are you talking like that for? The most I ever did was doctor a horse for the colic. That's fine training for this, isn't I it? I know. I couldn't do it. I just plain don't have the spirit. But you do. Oh, why didn't I leave you back in Dodge? It wouldn't have mattered anyway, Mr. Dillon, because you would never just stand by and let a man die. Let's go talk to him, just. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Daddy, fever's worse, Mr. Marshall. I I'm going to get some more water. Yeah. How do you feel, Mr. Hentry? I don't feel much, Marshal. Outside of burning up. I've been trying to tell Tara I just can't last long with blood poisoning. She just got to figure on it. Well, that's what I came to talk to you about. I... I guess you know the only thing that'll give you a chance. I know. I've been thinking about it. But I couldn't ask any man to do that. You didn't ask me. Well, it's up to you, Mr. Hantry. I'll, I'll try it if you're willing. Only thing is, I... I won't know much about what I'm doing. I've seen it done in the Union Army, Marshal. I could tell you some things. All right. The only thing is, Marshal... I don't know I'd be much use around here with one leg. Well, you'll have to decide that for for yourself. I know. You could move to town, Mr. Hendry, you and Tara. That's it, Tara. If it was just me, I wouldn't do it, but I can't leave Tara alone. Now, if I can help it, I, I can't. Uh, all right, Marshal. Let's do it. You're a brave man. No. No, Marshal. I just don't have any choice. Come on. Let's get it over with. You got any liquor in the house? There's a jug of corn out in the kitchen. Get it, Chester. You can start drinking it while we're getting everything else ready. Tell Tara to start boiling a lot of water. Yeah. I'll talk to her in a few minutes. I'll be right back. Now, I want you to tell me everything that you know about this, Mr. Hendry. First, I'll tell you what you'll need. Mm -hmm. There's a straight iron out by the corral somewhere. Yeah. You can heat it in the main room fireplace. Right. Now, what else? Tara will find some cloth for bandages. And the rest of the stuff you can get in the kitchen. Uh -huh. The only thing worrying me is what will we use to tie off the arteries with? Plain thread won't hold. Well... Uh, maybe some thin strips of raw hide. No, they, they'd soak through. you got to have something. No, I, that... I know. At least I think it'll work. What about horse hair? Oh, that's it, Marshal. Pull it off the tail. Uh. 
Well, it worked fine. Here's the judge, Mr. Hantry, and I brought you a cup, too. Pour me some. I want to get good and drunk. Here you are, Mr. Hantry. Frank. Frank. You know, I ain't been drunk in the daytime since we got the news about President Lincoln in the spring of 65. Uh, you better have your talk with Tara before that takes hold. Ask her to come in, will you? Come on, Chester, we got work to do. Yes, sir. Uh, good luck, Mr. Hantry. Thanks. Well, uh, Ma- Marshal? Yeah. Marshal? I'll try to make it easy for you. Yeah, sure. Shortly after noon, I operated. Whether it was the corn whiskey or his own hard courage, I don't know, but Hantry never whimpered. Chester stood outside the door and brought me whatever I needed. Tara waited in the kitchen, boiling more water and... Making her own thoughts. Maybe it was harder on her than any of us. And toward the end, Hantry mercifully passed out. When I'd finally finished bandaging him, I was kind of faint myself. I'd done everything I could. I just hoped I'd done it right. How is he, Mr. Dillon? You'll have to clean up in there, Chester. I've got to get outside for some air. Yes, sir, I'll do it. And put that fire out. It's hot enough around here. I don't know how you did it, Mr. Dillon. Tara? Uh, Tara, will you come on outside for a while? Is Daddy all right? Is he all right, Mr. Marshall? It's all over, Tara. We'll... Just have to wait and see now. <laughs> all right. There now, Tara. He's all right. I'm, I'm sorry, but it took so long. I I thought you'd never finish. He didn't feel much, Tara. The corn liquor worked fine. Fine. Will he get well now? Well, I, I hope so, Tara. I, I hope so. Mr. Marshall, are are you going to wait and see? Oh, now, Tara, you don't have to worry about that, Chester, and I'll be here as long as you need us. I, I just wanted to be sure... Can I, can I go see Daddy now? Well, uh, as soon as Chester comes out there, uh, then you can. All right. I'll wait, Mr. Marshall. It beats me, Mr. Dillon, how he can just lay there so quiet and peaceful. It's only been four or five hours, Chester. The liquor hasn't worn off yet. He drank nearly the whole jug. No, he needed it. Uh, Say, Mr. Dillon, look yonder. Huh? Somebody coming with a wagon. Oh, yeah. It's probably that Ben Walling they were talking about. I'll bet that's who it is, all right. Wonder what he'll have to say for himself. Ah, you'll think of something, Chester. His kind always do. You recognize him? No, sir. Do you? No, I never saw him before. Hello. What are you doing here? You Ben Walling. How'd you know? The hand trees. They've been wondering about you. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, He's old hand tree, anyway. He's all right. He is, huh? You've been gone a long time, Ben. Where were you? I don't know you, mister, but you sure ask a lot of questions. You can answer them one at a time. Now, where were you? 
Who are you anyway, mister? I'm a U.S. Marshal. Ain't no U.S. Marshals around here. There is now. Generally, I'm in Dodge. Your name Dillon? It is. Well, what are you doing here, Marshal? Terror ran into us, asked us to help. Seems the only able-bodied man around here took off in a wagon. I went to fetch a doctor. Is anything wrong in that? Not at all. Where is he? Well, first night the horses ran away, and I've been chasing them ever since. I didn't catch him till this morning. And then I've been gone so long, I thought I'd better get back to you right away. I was worried about Tara and old Hantry, of course. I see. Well, you better get your horses unhitched, Ben. You can see Tara later. She's in with her father now. Going to be all right, huh? I was kind of worried about that foot. Looked to me like it might have poison in it. It did. What do you mean, it did? I took his leg off about noon today. You what? Mr. Dillon did it all by himself, just like a regular doctor. Oh, but how'd you know what to do? You might have killed him. Somebody had to do it, Ben. It's a sure thing Tara couldn't. You're blaming me, ain't you? Well, I did everything I could. It isn't my fault those blasted horses run off. Antre's pretty sick, Ben. I wouldn't bother him for a day or two if I were you. Oh, I won't bother him. Oh, now look, Marshal. You can leave now. I'll handle everything here. We'll leave. As soon as Hantree's able to take care of himself again. All right, stay as long as you like. I don't care. Mr. Dillon? Yeah? I think that Ben is a no-good liar. You're right on both counts, Chester. I'll tell you something else. You see that saddle over there? Well, that belongs to Mr. Hantree. Yeah, I know. I looked at it this noon. Somebody cut the cinch strap on it. Cut the cinch strap? Mm-hmm. No wonder that bronc bucked him in the saddle off bull. Well, do you think Tara did it? Oh, my goodness gracious, no, Mr. Dillon. Tara'd never do a thing like that to her own... It was Ben, wasn't it? That'd be my guess. He figured the old man'd get hurt, maybe killed. Why, sir? So he'd have a free hand with Tara. Why is that low down... Mr. Dillon, let me arrest him. Not yet, Chester. There's plenty of time. All right, sir. I'll wait. There wasn't as much time as I figured Antree had a bad night And by morning he was so weak he couldn't lift his head I tried to take his pulse But I could hardly find it Maybe maybe I'd operated too late Maybe the poison had already moved up into his body I didn't know I had no way of knowing So there was nothing to do now But wait Want some more coffee, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thank you, Chester. We'll fill it up, huh? Tara won't eat anything at all, sir. She just sat there by his bed, hasn't slept a wink, I know of. Well, it's her father, Chester. He's all she's got. I never thought much about it before, Mr. Dillon, but seeing Tara, I kind of wish I had a daughter. You'd have to... Change your profession if you were going to take care of a daughter, Chester. Why, uh, I don't have any profession, Mr. Dillon. Oh, Mr. Marshall. Uh, yeah, what is it, Tara? Please, please come. Daddy wants you. I, I think he, he's... You better come too, Chester. Yes, sir. It's Matt Dillon, Mr. Hendry. Can you hear me? Marshall. I can't hold out. No more. Now, don't say that. Keep fighting, man. You'll pull through. No, Marshal. I'm going to die. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Tara. It's about Tara, Marshal. Don't leave her here. Ben Wally. He's no good. He'll try to keep her. Now, don't you worry about Ben Wally, Mr. Hansry. I promise you he won't get anywhere near Tara. Now or ever. Thanks, Marshal. He's a bad one. Tara can't stay here alone. She can't work this place. It's a bad way to die. Not knowing. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me now. Yeah. I promise you something else, too. I'll take care of Tara. I'll see she's all right. I'll see she's cared for. Now, I promise that. I thank you, Marshal. I sure. 
Where's Tara? Daddy, I'm right here. Daddy. Tara. Come on, Chester. Daddy. Daddy. I don't know, Mr. Dillon. I don't think they'd have made out on this place anyway. Why not, Chester? Well, there just isn't enough water. That one little old spring is all I've got. Well, if they had a lake, it'd still be too much for Tara. What are we going to do with her, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. We'll have to think of something, though. My, I wish she'd come out of that house. I don't like it, her in there breaking her heart. Give her a little time, Chester. She, she'll be all right. Don't you move her finger, either one of you. Well... Well, you're mighty careless with that rifle, Vince. Don't get smart with me, Marshal. I know what I'm doing. And what would that be? I heard you in there. Heard you promise to take Tara away. I was right by the window. I heard it all. You got a curious way of courting a girl, Ben, trying to kill her father. Yeah, and I saw you yesterday looking at that saddle, but I didn't kill him, Marshal. You did. That's a lie, Ben Walling, and well, you, you know it. Up. I won't shut up. If we'd have just got here sooner, Mr. Dillon would have saved him, that's all. Uh, well, too bad you got here at all. Because you're going to die for it. Both of you. Put the gun down, Ben. You're under arrest for attempted murder. You stay right where you are, Marshal. You know, I have an idea you've smelled powder before, Ben, and that you're afraid of it. Marshal? I have an idea that's why you tried to get Hantry like you did instead of facing it. Stop, sir. And right now you wish you didn't have that rifle at all, don't you, Ben? Because I might have to shoot you. No. All right, huh? No, don't, Marshal. Give me that. <laughs> You all right, Mr. Dillon? He didn't even try, Chester. Rifle went off when I knocked it aside. That's all he was scared to death. Well, I, I didn't feel exactly comfortable. Well, tie him up and keep an eye on him. I'll go see Tara. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Late that evening, we buried Hantry out on the prairie, out in back of the little homestead. They would die now, too, and fall apart without him. The next morning, we loaded everything we could get into the wagon. With Tara beside me, we started off for Dodge. Ben Wallen never said a word. Chester led his horse, and they rode along ahead of us. I had plenty of time to tell Tara all about Dodge and how... There were some good people there, and how we'd find her a home and a family. She sat there, tight-lipped. She didn't say much. But she never once looked back. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Sammy Hill, and Larry Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. In case you didn't know, Jack Benny and his gang begin their new season tomorrow night. Jack, Mary, Don, Dennis, and Rochester welcome a new member to the team, the head man of CBS Radio's Club 15 show, Bob Crosby. Roy Rowan speaking. Remember the top dramatic show of them all, the Lux Radio Theater, is heard Monday nights on the CBS Radio Network.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.